the civic uh -huh. clerk thing that they want me to do the minutes on has no, like you, the do it like you would normally do it. Okay, it, go yeah. live. Yeah. And we're live. We're good to go, Stephen. Okay. Hold on. There is, where is the, there it is. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, guys, welcome to the meeting. Uh, gonna go over the agenda real quick. How you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, let me, on. This is. I'm gonna share my screen so you guys can see the agenda. You guys see? Got it. Beautiful. Okay, so roll call. Folks, uh, this is the old agenda. No, this is us. Okay. Chair Stephen Russell here. Dania Silveria. Are you here? She's here, but muted. Oh, Lord. He's here. Okay. Francois, Francois Avery. Here. Here. You'll let Merritt. My goodness. I think I'm getting feedback from Janie's. Um, yeah, me too. Emerson Brown. Present. Hey, Mitch Tyler. Here. Beautiful. Wow, what's behind Emerson? Monterey Bay Aquarium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My work. <laughs> Are you at work? No, it's just our background. Oh, I see. Virtual I'm working from home, like the whole world. Yeah. Virtual background. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you have received a copy, you should have received also a copy. At, I'm scrolling down. We're going to be reviewing the agenda from our last meeting, November the 10th. Again, we're on quarterly meetings due to the pandemic and COVID. So uh, if you notice any discrepancies that we need to discuss, please review the minutes. Um, and the agenda from last, last meeting. Janie, you got, you got some, I don't know what's going on there. Um, you're on mute again, so. All right, so please take this time now to review the agenda from our last quarterly meeting back in November and any of the items there within the minutes. So these are the things that we discussed. So you all should have a copy of the agenda in the packet, either that was uh, mailed to you physically or you have access now to a link where there are all the documents uploaded. You're considering for adoption? I need a motion to approve said minutes from last meeting. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Vice Chair Janie Silviera. Just do a thumbs up, yeah. Okay, yeah, just throw a thumbs up. Raise your hand, please, and acknowledge so we don't. Don't unmute, just raise your hand to acknowledge yes or no.
Jenny? Her connection doesn't look so hot. Ooh. Yeah, I think we've. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, Miss Tyler. Hi. <laughs> uh, Emerson Brown. Hi. And Francois Avery. Um, I'll uh, pass because I I don't have a hard copy, so I can't. So I'll pass. Abstain. Yes. Okay. I I think Janie voted I. I I I don't really know, but Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Motion passes. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our agenda. Um we're now open for public comment. And we didn't, do we have any? I've, re I've received no public comment from tonight. Beautiful. Okay. So, all right. So business items, we already approved the minutes. So kind of smash things together. Business items. So um, I reached out to the city manager of Sand City. And um, this is something that uh, our last meeting, uh, Emerson requested that I find more information about. Uh, so I reached out to the city manager and had a, a, a over the phone meeting with uh, Aaron Blair, who is the city manager of Sand City, to kind of ask him questions as to how they were able to get such a huge push uh, for public art in the city of Sand City, specifically on the west end of Sand City. Uh, I know of a arts consortium uh, called The Shop in Monterey that actually did participate in their public art call for murals. And he shared with me a ton of information uh, regarding the project that they that they enacted during COVID actually uh, to have all this art kind of done. Now, um, overall, just to give you kind of a, a snapshot, they had a very significant budget when it came to enacting this public arts arts project. And it was, he, he kind of danced around the figures, but overall it's, he said $65,000. And so I'm going to share with you uh, some of the things that he gave to me. And, and I'm going to I'm chop, pop in and out here, guys. Sorry. Uh, da -da -da -da. That you'll let Merritt, who just joined. Oh, cool. I'm just getting ready. Yes. I'm assuming that it's her. And um, give me one second to continue. So I have um, several documents that I'm going to share with you uh, that uh, Aaron Blair shared with me. This is the he was just hired about a year ago, and so his whole thing was to try and get more public art in the city of San City. Um, they are kind of in a different um, situation than we are. Uh, they're a much smaller city, um, so they are a little bit more uh, agile when it comes to doing these things. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing uh, six documents with you just to see, just so you guys can see what they did. And then there's possibly a way for us to uh, take from it some best practices that we can maybe apply in the future, if for whatever reason we get a larger budget, or if we're able to get uh, a, co a collaborative agreement with maybe Seaside Creates or something like that. But this is the agreement for public art uh, that he shared with me. This is a contract uh, between artists and the city of San City. Uh, this is a multiple page document, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but basically it comes into the cost of the installation, the obligation of the artist uh, working with the city manager and the city. Uh, there's a lot of legalese within this contract. So this is a binding contract that the artists who were hired to work on large public works in the city of San City would have to uh, use and we can. I'm gonna. All these documents are shared so you guys can take a look at them and see what they actually had to do working with their city lawyer and creating and writing up this contract. So it's it's uh, a very robust contract for the artists. There's a lot of interesting things in here. I think that we can definitely 
pull if we wanted to create kind of an artist contract if we were going to do a large push for murals. And that's pretty much what it is in the city right now is, are these large scale murals. What they did was overall, they contracted with a company called, um, I think uh, Colorado Creates. It's this company out of Colorado, based out of Denver, Colorado. And they recruited professional artists to come in and work with community artists to create um, kind of like this public art project. So they did a huge push. That's why there are a lot of murals that went up in, in a very short period of time. So this, this is just a contract that they had with specific artists for public murals. I'm gonna stop this share and I'm going to open up another one. I wanna kind of walk you guys through this whole thing though because it's very interesting. I'm gonna go back and forth to share screens. I'm used to having like three different screens to, to pull things from. So this is, this is a little awkward. Um, all right, so this is for specifically um, for the property owners that they actually had the work done on. So a lot of the buildings in San City that have mural work on it, they agreed with the property. They, they had a, a meeting with property owners who were interested in having and hosting public art on their, on their uh, walls. And so this is the contract that they had with um, those uh, public, you know, those property owners. So it walks through like, hey, what happens if someone tags this, someone graffitis over the work? Well, the city is going to be responsible for doing that. Who's going to be paying for it? Well, the city is. So, and sometimes uh, Aaron was explaining to me that some of the property owners kicked in for um, helping to pay the artist for this and some did not. Um, so there was an MOU with, within this contract for each property that received a mural. So as you can see, it's like optional coding, like what can you do to do anti-graffiti, you know, to find the tenants access to these walls, who's going to be actually accessing it. So it's a collaboration between the visiting artists and the city of San City is specifically the city manager. Um, talks about the city's rights and responsibilities, miscellaneous provisions. So this is a binding contract with, you know, the property owner in the city, which I thought we don't have anything like this. It'd be, it'd be nice for us to, to also, again, pull from this and create a best practice for our commission too, as well. All this stuff that um, Aaron did, we can actually kind of pull from. And he's, he's said he would be willing to help us out in any way as, a, as an outside consultant to help us out in our endeavors and getting more public art, specifically murals in the city of Seaside. So let me stop this share. Going again, back and forth. Let's see. So. Steve, wouldn't all this have to be subject to Seaside's legal well, I mean, I don't think we're going to be motioning anything today. I think it was just good for us to see oh, more documents I want to share. But um, I mean, definitely, if we want to push forward, we don't really have a budget of $65,000 to pay a consulting company to come in and also bring in artists from all over. The, they brought in artists from Tennessee, from Miami, from all over the nation, as well as uh, local artists. So there was a local artist collaboration as well as nationally recognized large scale mural artists. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I wanted to share this with you so that you guys could see what they did. Um, I don't necessarily know how we can proceed here, but I mean, if we have some ideas, this is the uh, seven wall, 13 artists, seven, September 28th through the October 5th. These are some of the um, artists that were invited to participate this is just one of their murals, uh, one of the, the invites that they had. There's more, there's also a call to artists poster, which is kind of cool. And again, that that West End logo. Hold on, let me share that now. Oh my God, this is crazy. So this is a um, call for local artists. You know what, the San City Art Committee is seeking proposals from local Monterey Peninsula artists. And this is the thing that I kind of turned into when um, artist friends that I knew in, this, in the community were like, hey, can you vote on my, on my mural design so I can you know, get, get it approved so I can do it in San City. Um, so this is the time and place. 
they had a deadline, you know, October 19th to submit their design for review. So they don't have a commission, they have an artist committee. It's kind of cool. They're branded. That's their that's the West End brand, that little cat, that abstract cat looking thing. And they've had it since, as you can tell, the 90s. And let me show you their press release. So they, they did their, I mean, Aaron Blair is like really the, the new city manager. He was the impetus for all this happening. He really wanted to come in and just kind of shake things up. He's like, this place is amazing. We need to put some more public art up. So this is their press release for the call of artists, call to artists. And it involves like, hey, we're in COVID here. We're also doing this thing, um, but just understand we're using the restrictions and protocols that are in place from the county as well as the state. All right, cultural offerings with the West End, blah, blah, blah. There's a link, there's a hyperlink within this press release for them to, you know, if you wanna submit proposals. Um, so this is, this is something that they pushed out. This is October, I mean, August 11, 2020. And I mean, they have all these, if, I don't know if you've been down to, to the West End, there's a ton of murals now uh, because of this huge project. We have, let's see, one, there's a, re this is the good one I was looking at that I liked, uh, this, this press release. Let me share this. Oof. So this went out September 16th, a little bit later. So they, you know, said that they were using six local artists. I know, I think four or five of them that did one of the murals. Um, it was a Dolly mural. So all the information here, but this is kind of cool. They have, these are local artists. And then they have also all the artists from all over the nation that participated in this large mural project, you know, from Portland, Reno, Denver, uh, Massachusetts, Utah, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so they had a huge kind of national representation of professional artists who do this as their occupation and not only just community artists, but national, nationally recognized large scale muralists. So I don't know if this is something that we want to investigate, if we want to pursue, but I thought it'd be, you know, I know Emerson really wanted to know the nuts and bolts. Those are kind of the nuts and bolts as to how they did it. And really the legalese and all that stuff we can create, the hard part is getting the money attached to it. You know, money does make things happen. That being said, we don't have a huge budget in our commission to do something like this. And we also know that because of COVID and loss of revenue, we're not gonna have a significant budget going forward, even if um, we reopen. So these are just things to think about um, maybe in the future that we can plan for. I uh, just wanted to share this and just kind of give you that information. So I hope that answers your question, Emerson. Yeah, thank you. And you, is that gonna be circulated? Did you already circulate it? I heard you said it was. It's out in the world right now. It's, uh, you should have access to it either, either as a, um, as a physical, as physical document sent to you or. It was in the packet, right? It, it was should in the be packet. packet. If it's not yeah, in right. the packet, then it's, you have access to it digitally. Okay. Excuse cool. Yes, oh, Hamish. No, go ahead. go ahead, Hamish. I have a few more things to say, but go ahead. No, I was just curious. I think it's a great idea. Uh, and there might be ways to fundraise uh, to develop a, a kind of a, an interest in a brand like Sand City has done. Yeah. Uh, how, how did uh, they determine content? Did they uh, preview and then ask the artists to do a certain rendition was was that left up to the artist so i think it was they left it up to the artist and then those designs were definitely previewed to the um to the uh, arts committee the committee yeah, yeah. Okay. so real quick let me just share with you um their their website for public art if you haven't seen it this will cool. be this will be a beneficial so you guys see that? So this is their, um, pub, they have this, there's a you know thing for visitors and it says public art. Now this is their map 
of all the different uh, pieces that are up currently in the city on the West End per primarily, okay? So there's a little legend here, like number one through seven, where all these things are located, including like a community garden, you know, Sweet Atlanta's Cafe, <laughs> rotating food truck, those, those little things there too as well. But they created a legend here where all their significant large scale murals are located. And they have a little blurb on, you know, like what they're doing, what their policy is for, for art. They have, you know, you can download the map if, if say for instance, you're ever gonna visit San Jose if you're a tourist. And then there's a little gallery here, a little public gallery of those large scale murals specifically from that project that they pushed out in the fall of 2020. Yep. So which, can... go ahead, sorry. No, please go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, so <clears throat> this is slightly off topic, but looking <laughs> you guys well i'm coming back to the topic at hand but so this is this little mini gallery is should inspire us for future um art displays like that's exactly what we've been talking about for um the shows that we have the exhibitions we have yeah. at city hall so that that's it could be as simple as that, but I know it's a, it's a infrastructure thing um, on the website. But I'm anyway, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, Emerson, too. As yeah, well. yeah, I saw on the agenda. That's I just wanted to say like that's cool. So back to the top, get hand. Um, that's exactly what I needed, Steve. So I think as I think there are ways to accomplish this with less money, um, and. I, I'll look at the documents. I think the, the documents are, once you have that paperwork, that's sort of, you need that, um, you need that foundation established. And, and if you don't have that expertise, it takes a lot of time. So if we can, like you said, establish some best practices and our own documents based on those, similar to what we did with the, 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 the guidelines, um, you know, I came up, <laughs> When I was a kid, things were very DIY, and, and I think it, there's a good mixture of um, um, of local artists who just want a space. So if we can find, you know, with these documents, if we can adapt these documents, get the and this is pie in the sky. I'm just thinking it out loud since we're if we can get the city manager on board, do another presentation at the. Um, you know, city council to get it okayed. Um, I think in the future, like you said, there's a way to do this where if we could just get um, the, the paperwork's in place and we say, you know, we get like commitments um, on, a, on a less grand scale <laughs> in terms of like what we want to accomplish. You know, yeah. we don't, cause those are some huge murals too. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we just get, uh, that, that that that's achievable. It's just a matter of, you know, kind of pounding the pavement sometimes and going yeah. out, you know, finding the find the people that want their wall painted and and then finding lo the local people who are enthusiastic about doing it and and not just saying they'll do it and then not do it, but actually do it. So sometimes that's the challenge. But I I could. I could see that there, it would be a slower process, like they did that in less than a year, but um, I'm not dissuaded. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> but, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not dissuaded either. It's just, yeah. I know. I could, but to your point, um, we have to be realistic. So I, I don't, I don't think, <clears throat> uh, I'm saying to everybody else, I know you realize this, but I don't think just because we don't have money that we can't get anything done. Um, but I do, think we should do it right even if we do it um on a smaller scale but but i think that's the you've nailed the first important step and i'll look at those documents and sort of like i did with the i'm not given a timeline right now but yeah. sort of like i did with the the public art guidelines i'll i'll start noodling and and see what i think and um i'll i'll put it on the agenda to report back once i once I have some more thoughts about it. Does that sound okay? 
That sounds great, man. If you want to spearhead that, that'd be great. Well, that's what I mean. Now I'm going to look at the documents and give it some serious thought and, and, you know, make sure, um, you know, like everybody, uh, you know, my work has had some challenges. So I, I got to, <laughs> you know, I'm scattered like everybody else, just given the reality. So um, I hear you. Yeah. Well, it's, it doesn't really, you know, I don't want it to affect this. I'm, I'm, I'm still at work. It's just, you know, you know, it's the reality of um, everyone's situation right now. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what I'll say. I'll look at them. And once I kind of see what I think I can do realistically, I'll, I'll report back. I'll put it on the agenda. But that, that's really great, Steve. And thank you for doing that. You're welcome. It was a, it had a really great uh, hour long conversation with, with Aaron. And I think we're going to, con- we basically, I created a bridge with yep. Sand City and what they're doing. And I think, you know, it's going to give us kind of an example going forward, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. So I, ho- I hope that was, uh, it was, it was helpful for you guys to see what we're doing and, you know, what they're doing and what we hopefully will be doing in the future. Yeah. Um, and even, I think, so one more thing is I think even unrelated to um, murals on buildings, if we ever hear back from the, and I'm sorry if I missed it on the agenda. I, I saw most of the stuff, but um, like the utility boxes on, if we ever figure out if we can do that or not, that same paperwork can be used for the agreements, you know, for the utility oh, yeah. box. So, we're, so we're it's very, today too. <laughs> yeah, I thought I saw it. I wasn't sure, but I was just like, so that's, so what I'm saying is that you did a big thing that, that, cause that paperwork is endlessly useful in oh, terms yeah. of, of getting things on paper and and getting the, the things in, in black and white that that make people comfortable about oh yeah the the california laws those those are not specific to any city they're they're things that we can cite and use for when we're drawing up yeah. contracts with with future artists for sure great thank you so much you're welcome all right let me go back to the where is it the agenda <laughs> all right hold on oh there you registering why aren't you talking uh, do we need some sort of uh motion going forward on no that? no we don't need a motion that, that that's nothing to be motioned for yeah that was like a commissioner report or something <laughs> yeah thank yeah. you hamish all right so um i have i put a lot of stuff on the agenda i apologize that this is going to be a crowded one so um avery gallery so i've been meeting with the the owner of uh, Imagine Art Supplies, Jermaine Hatcher. Um, I don't. I really wish Sandra Gray was here because this might be something that we can table to the next quarterly meeting. Because if she's not here, then we can't discuss schedule because she's the one that schedules the Avery. And because we don't really know when the Avery is going to come back. I'm on, here. On. Are you here? My bad. Yes. I apologize. I'm just waiting till my my part. <laughs> But okay. if you have a question, I'm happy to help. So with the schedule, you know, we don't really know what's happening right now with Avery Gallery it being open or not. But I wanted to uh, present this. She is creating a body of work um, that is very specific to like Black history. And she wants to collaborate with her archive. And um, her show is basically about a specific slave ship. Um, and its um, occupants and how they've immigrated to, how they were, you know, brought to this country um, and how they became American citizens and were eventually voted. And, ha- and she wants to somehow tie that diaspora of uh, black slaves from West Africa to uh, the population of, of black residents in the city of Seaside. And so this is a show that I, I want to maybe present uh, going forward in the future, because we don't really know the, the situation going up, going forward with COVID and when we're going to reopen. But this is something that I want to definitely consider for a uh, solo show at the Avery Gallery, because her body of work, it's very large and the pieces that she's creating are very large too, as well. I think it would be a really powerful thing if we we're able to showcase our archives when we have a, a, a history and slash art show related to the history of the diaspora of uh, Black Americans and tying it to our existing Black residents 
uh, history in the archive that's located in our archive. So she wants to tie what she's doing visually with um, basically our archive, which, you know, kind of ties in with what we do with our, our biannual art, uh, excuse me, history show. But no motion. I'm just putting it out there. It's something that I really want us as a commission to consider because I think it would be a really important um, tying back, you know, to uh, the diaspora and slave trade that happened many years ago and then tying it back to the residents here in Seaside, the historic bl black residents of Seaside. Can you give a little background on, on Jermaine Hatcher? There's a, um, Viola has a question, had a question about um, oh. Jermaine's background. Uh, Jermaine has been a resident of Monterey County. She actually um, was the active manager of Art Max when it was on uh, Broadway in Seaside. She's an active member of the Black community here in the Monterey County as well as Seaside. Um, she's been here for, I don't know, 40 plus years. She's a uh, art teacher, art mentor at Youth Arts Collective in Monterey. She owns, she's the proprietor of Imagine Art Supplies in PG. Um, so she has, she has uh, roots here in the community. She's a community advocate and artist. Um, she's also gonna be a part of the Yak Mentor Show if that ever happens in the future. Um, so yeah, and she's, she's been a great ally for art educators all over the Monterey County. She's the only- I wanted to tell you- store. Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to say she is gonna be in the Black History exhibit show program that I'll talk about later. Okay, yeah. For her this month. So yeah, she's, she's just, um, I think she would be, I think that show would be a, a good showcase of a local artist who is showcasing our archive and then tying it to her, her paintings, her visual art too as well. So just putting it out there, uh, something to consider, something that we'll, we'll, I'll probably bring up again later when we actually have kind of a, a road plan going forward once things start opening up sometime in the future, so. Is there a, and is there an online gallery infrastructure to help showcase that's the next, uh, that's the next uh, thing on the agenda, which is a good segue um, into- Oh, I see. Sorry. I was looking at them as one agenda. My apologies. I'm sorry. The yeah. Online, <laughs> hopefully, yeah, it's okay. Online gallery for the Avery Gallery. I, you know, it's, this is something that um, I tried to kind of investigate uh, the, you know, during, between the, the last meeting and this meeting. And I think, uh, Ashley, can you- like I think we're we're handcuffed by certain things with the city, of creating an online online gallery. No, I think we can create a gallery with the website through the website. Through and, the website, but it has to be a part of the city's website. So in order to create a gallery, it has to be it has to be a part of the city's website. It cannot be something that is separate, unless there is. A program out there that will assist us with an online gallery that can be linked directly to the website. So it has to be a part of the city's website because the gallery is a part of the city. Um, so those things have to be, you know, to merge together. But it's, I would say that an online gallery is not impossible. And it's definitely something that we've been talking about for quite some time. Um, I, I just saw the slides you had up for Sand City in their public art page. And, you know, we may have to start with something similar, something small, and then grow it over time. But it's definitely not impossible. Okay. So we can't do like a Google website and then just link it to the city website. No. no. Okay. It has so to we be can't... something that, yeah, it has to be something that is a part, is the part of the city's website. Um, and it has to be something that it can't be something separate that, you know, it has to be something that is managed and by the city. Okay. So we can't do anything like that. Somebody's hand is up. Whose hand is that? Francois. Francois. Hi. Um, I, I had, I had an idea of um, like, you know, 
Sandra, you know, took a lot of pictures of past exhibits and maybe, you know, combine those and do maybe a, an online show. We'd have to definitely expand the capacity of our existing website to do that. And if I don't have access, then I don't know, that falls... I don't know who's who. Who does that fall upon to develop some capacity within our city existing website to host, you know, like images with labels and. Yeah, you know, I mean, we'd have to we'd have to explore that a little bit, but we we definitely can um, look into capacity and and what it would take. We just have to we we have we you know we just have to have the right questions. And then once we do, we can, you know, what we, what do we need and, and whether, and I can explore whether or not we have the capacity and, and talk, talk to the right people. Yeah. So like the sand city where it's just images in a frame or like a wireframe. I mean, is there a way to, to find out if there's already, you know, some templates that we can integrate that are easily integrated into what you already use. That's kind of what we need the technical, because I don't know what the, the websites run on. And I mean, you know, that's not really, I haven't had like a big need to figure it out, but that's kind of, yeah. uh, that kind of stuff. We, I guess both of us need to know, because then if we have the right images, you know, you can just size those and drop those into a wireframe, a template yeah, or yeah, we have the we have the structure to to put images like that up on the website. You know, yeah. we can size them appropriately. Yeah, so it seems easy. I mean, you know, aside from actually doing the work, I mean, in terms of the technology, right? But so I guess what I'm wondering is what what do you mean, Steve? By and I, this is an innocent question. It's not. Literal. I'm just. What do you mean by like capacity and? All of that do you mean like to actually to do the work or do you mean the website's capability well, well i mean i don't know have you been to our city website lately yeah it's pretty low tech i mean you know but that's okay it's i don't see that um nothing in it tells me that we can't have pictures like sand city does like you know and acquired yeah. like just lined up in a grid i don't know that we'd be able to like click them on and blow them up or, you know, have a, 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 a scroll over Zoom or anything like that. But that may not be necessary at the beginning. I, I, I just, if we, I think if I knew like what was possible, um, you know, like mm -hmm. there's work I'd be willing to do to get the, the images and shape to be plopped in and things like that. But I, um, I'm still not out there. Um, I see, not to, that's the thing. That's the yeah. thing. I'd be willing to do that, but I don't think I have access to the website. Like, and you know, Ashley, when you when you say ask the right questions, who are we asking the questions to? And what do, I mean, can we? My my question is, can we do an, host and host an online gallery through the city website? Is that a possibility? Like, and who would facilitate that? Would that be unfortunately falling on you and Sarah or on Sandra or, that yeah. Falls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I was in, yeah, visiting. Something that would be gifted out to anyone. That would be something that we would have to take on. And if that's a project that is the will of the commission to explore and to do, then that's, I mean, we, we, we've been talking about an online gallery and trying to find a way to do an online gallery for quite some time. We, we can do that. What I saw there on the Sand City website, mm -hmm. on, on that webpage, I, you know, I'm pretty sure we could do that. That doesn't, that's not something that is impossible. I think, yeah. I think one of the things that we should, and I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself or talk about things that are not necessarily on the agenda. However, you know, Sandra's working, we've been talking, we've been working on Black History Month and working on trying to do something. We're doing a slideshow because we're going to do a virtual Black History Month. So we've done a slideshow of art and we're trying to figure out a way, maybe that could be a task run to see if we could potentially put that art up on a page and make it look 
you know, good. Yeah. Maybe use that as a, as an example to see, okay, let's, let's, you know, you want to beta good. test it first. Yeah, with beta the test yeah. It. You. That's the word beta test it. See, see what it looks like. And we bring it back to the commission, you know, when we meet again, okay, this is what it looks like. And then do we like it? Yes or no? What, you know, can we tweak it here and there? We really won't know until really it is Sarah and I. Yeah. <laughs> and I really Sarah and I'm going to help. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, um, I, I, think, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's definitely possible. But I think we, we won't know until we start doing the work and kind of testing the limits on what's possible. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, so I, th I definitely think if you're willing, let's start there. We're going to get some digital art in for Black History Month and, and we're going to start that project and we should use that as a beta test to see what it looks like. See if, okay. you know, if we yeah, like I like it. that idea. And all I meant was, even if we don't have access, Steve, I think, you know, like if we had the, because I, I certainly understand, uh, staff capacity i mean you know where i work is um you know my team is small just like the team we work with here so i certainly don't want to overburden them for just for our whim so um what i was thinking was even like if we got the specifications from y'all once you knew them and you just needed help prepping images we like email them to you or whatever is allowed by the city you know just so you, to make your job easier, you know, like even if we didn't have access, we could prepare the images like you're getting them from the artist, um, so that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's awesome, but I don't think we're going to know what we need help with until we're in there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. yes, I but totally I, understand that. I'm, I'm just, uh. That the minute we do. Yeah, <laughs> we're I'm just supposing. For help, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm just supposing. I don't. I don't mean to uh, presume. Yeah. No, I, I, I really, really appreciate that the, that you guys are so conscientious about our capacity as a staff and, and everything that's going on. But I also recognize that, you know, we're in the pen, we're in the middle of a pandemic and every, we're making the transition. A lot of programs are virtual and recreation and there's, you know, there's really no reason why the art program and the gallery shouldn't try, you know, shouldn't make the transition in the, in the meantime, as much as we can anyways. It's not going to be perfect by any means, but, you know, at least, you know, we want to do something. Yeah, if it's, I mean, I, I know that the reason why I bring it up is because our, my, the high school students in the Monterey County are participating in art shows and online, online galleries, and they do, there are some existing uh, best practices that we can pull from them. Like they using their most galleries are using a Google form that allows them to upload an image to the Google form with all the pertinent information necessary for uh, said um, website runner to pull all the information and then disseminate it into an existing template that they have. Um, is it the best best thing for you know showcasing art? No, but is it is it something that we could possibly adopt? you know, yeah, um, you know, lower res, you know, smaller files, um, but getting work up there. Now, am I saying, should we accept 700 plus works of art for like the youth competitive? Oh, no, because <laughs> we're not doing that. You know, most galleries are accepting between like 30 and 40 works of art for their youth competitive shows, you know, in the area, like Karma Art Association did one, um, Scholastic Arts, um, the international one. So, I mean, there's ways to do it. So that's not like, you know, I figured it was coming down to you and Sarah doing this where it wouldn't be killing you. You know what I mean? I don't think we're going to have the youth competitive this year, but you know, that's, that's okay. Um, but I just think if we're able to do kind of a mixture of both po pulling some, some, maybe some archival uh, artwork up that's been in the Avery gallery, before and then also you know trying out and beta testing the black history month artwork that's great so anything is better than nothing right so yeah yeah the, i would say the end goal is um just to continue the mission of avery 
and just in whatever capacity is possible to to allow the uh, you know regional area and regional art to to be seen right and give that avenue to local artists so but you know that's that's the reason ultimately and then once it's established hopefully we can use it in normal times to 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 uh create greater exposure so for people yeah. who can't come on site and that's it and deepen and yeah. widen our, our arts yeah. practice and, and yeah. visual practice in that way and yeah. you know create more capacity for people to access yeah. the stuff that's on that's you know on display so yeah and just right. be re realistic yeah we, yeah we totally get that part anyway i'm done that's all <laughs> I'm done. any any other you know good for the order for this i'm you know. I per, I have a question for Ashley. Yes. Um, the Black History Month you're you're talking that current current Black History Month you're trying to put something together right now or you're talking about the future? Yes, I'm talking about right now, not the future. And I was going to okay. talk about it in staff communication because we had so many topics on the agenda um, and didn't necessarily okay. want to talk more topics. Yep but I am gonna talk about Black History Month and plans for Black History Month under our staff meeting. All right, good. Yes. Thank you. Like within the next couple of weeks. Cool. All right, um, Sarah, I, I thought I had you strike BLM because I'm not ready to, to even present anything on that, so. But I initially had that put on the agenda, but I, I retracted it, so. And I believe that it was retracted and this may be an old agenda that got sent out um, because we I'm, I'm almost certain we did and I'll just double check my records on that. Okay. All right, so in that case, we're gonna move on to utility boxes and I have some things to share with you that I received from Capitola. And this is the second time I presented this because I think it's a good thing for us to revisit uh, going forward. Um, so I'm going to stop this share. And oh wow, it's a word file. Wow. Whoops. What's going on here? Oh my goodness. Okay, sorry guys technical difficulties. I'm opening up a Word file the first time I have done in a long time because I don't use Word anymore. All right, so this is from Capitola Art and Cultural Commission. Um, this is their call to artists graphic track boxes. Now, they have a pretty robust uh, collection of utility boxes that have been um, adopted by artists and decorated. Um, so this is something they did back in 2009. You can kind of tell by the script that they use. This is, you know, mid 2000s. So this is a call to artists. The budget for each artist is $500 per box. $500 for preparation and coordination expenses. A total of $4,500 in artist fees. The city is responsible for prepping and priming the boxes. So the city of, city of Capitola actually went and like prepared all the utility boxes that, that had been chosen for uh, customization by the artists. And their theme, I believe, was entertain us. So there was a kind of, it's basically an open theme. Um, they have a project timeline and uh, panel selection as well, which is kind of cool. So that was actually chosen by a panel of community members and art committee members. They had a timeline of approximately six months for the beginning inception of the art work being designed to completion. Guidelines for submissions, a resume, an annotated image list, all this stuff. Yes, Hamish, I'm sorry. What's up? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm ignorant. What is a utility box? What is that? Even? <laughs> what, what is that? They're uh, usually junction boxes located on street corners. You can see on Broadway alone, we have about 12, if not more. Um, usually they're the most 
tagged and graffitied um, oh. section of a street because <laughs> they're not a building. They're just, they're, they're usually gray. And they usually house um, data lines. Uh, sometimes they're PG and E junction boxes. Sometimes they're AT and T. Uh, it really depends. Um, but they come in a variety of shapes and sizes as well as colors. Um, they'll usually have a address on them. And something that uh, we kind of noticed along Broadway a few years ago that they're being uh, tagged quite often, uh, usually with uh, gang placas or you know, like, you know, gang script like XIV. And then the city would have to go out and cover them up. Uh, many cities in the area, Monterey, Marina, um, and also north of us in Capitola and Santa Cruz have kind of turned those into art objects, which really does kind of curb the negative graffiti that goes on, on them. So I reached out to Capitola a few years ago to share with me what they did uh, to get their utility boxes painted. So I'm sharing this with you guys now. Some of you haven't seen this before. Um, this is again, another example of best practices that are being used um, by other cities. Uh, this is just one example. I chose Capitola because it is lo you know, pretty local, close to us in proximity and that we could reach out to them. So this is the call to artists that they shared with me, which is something that we could also use to uh, possibly get community arts. I've already talked to several um, artists in Monterey who are interested in participating as well as some CSAT artists, um, as well as a couple schools who were interested in doing it too. So Seaside including as well as um, Martin Luther King. All right, I'm gonna share this one. So this is the city from the city manager's department in the city of Capitola and where they were talking about doing the graphic traffic box art project. So this is actually a motion thing that they did. And you can see the discussion as to, you know, what they're gonna do, how many boxes, what kind of art, where is the funding come from? You know, so as you can see, there's, um, you know, total of the project is expected to be $6,500. Um, and how they broke it down, how, the, how that money is being allocated and distributed. Um, fiscal impact. They also attach some other documents to this, um, this discussion too as well, like the locations of each traffic box, photos of the designs that were submitted by the artists as well as the artist agreements of those artists that were chosen. So there were 11 submissions altogether that were brought for consideration so, I mean, we have 11 alone that we could probably address on, on Broadway alone. And our city has quite a, be, quite a few utility boxes that should be considered for decorations just because of the amount of graffiti that's been on them and has been covered up by city workers. So I'm not, this is something we don't have the motion on. I just wanted to share this with you just to, you know, hopefully in the future, when things are opening up, we can possibly move forward on this project. It's not something that I don't think we can move forward on now um, due to the state of city affairs because of COVID, but I definitely wanted to share with you guys just to keep it in, um, in kind of like your mind's eye right now. All right, moving on, we got a lot to go. So where is the agenda? Going back to the agenda. So here's the big mama jama guys, uh, the work plan for 2021. And that's um, something we need to address soon because it is February. Work plan is going to be due when again, Ashley? Unmute myself. Work plans are typically due in April. Right. Um, but since we are on a quarterly meeting system, we would not be meeting again. We'd be meeting in May, so we would so we would have to get it, you know, finalized as much as we can tonight. Mm -hmm. um, unless the it's the will of the commission to meet again um, to to specifically to finalize the report, and that is your prerogative. And I I did what I said I was going to do, right? I I I think I submitted my. Like I tried to shift things around yes. to what we had done and what we still needed to do. And it's included in the packet. And yeah. If you need 
Yes. Yeah, packet. I can pull it up if you don't have it. I'm not sure if you have it. Yeah, so. I'll stop my share. Yeah. So Ashley, can you can you pull that up, please? I mean, I didn't have to do a whole heck of a lot, really. <laughs> no. Yeah. But it should be a good starting place. I I hope I would have got. I you guys could give me hard. If I ever say I'll do something again, Ashley and Sarah, and you need me to to do more with it, uh, give it definitely give me feedback. <laughs> so I, because I'm not just yeah, I'm not. I, I want it to be helpful. So I hope this was helpful. But if I ever, if it ends up not being helpful, feel free to give me a bunch of feedback in the future. Okay, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I really appreciate you doing this. That was great. Um, I just want to make sure I got all the pages. So, I think it looks great, Emerson. Is that okay? Can you guys see that all right? Mm -hmm. So this was in the overall package. I, um, I'm sure it's great, but this is the first time I'm, I'm seeing it. Um, Yeah, Hamish, we, um, we'll, but we have to follow that protocol. We can't like share things outside of public view. So um, we have to, just, the, Sarah and Ashley have to distribute this stuff like officially. I have to give it to them. They have to re-give it to us. Yeah, I understand that. But... Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have enough time to really give it some. Make, make some sort of exchange critical and informative decision, we need to look at it, right? We have, we have some time now if you want to take a look at it. It's, we have looked at this before. I think it was... Uh, Not Emerson's what? corrected version. Well, I know, but it, I don't think... What I'm seeing is there isn't drastic or dramatic or dynamic changes to the work plan <laughs> because um, you know we haven't really done much this this fiscal year so is what's in red what you did emerson or yeah okay yeah, and it, it wasn't a whole heck of a lot i'm not i mean i'm gonna be honest it didn't take much because i just what i remember committing to was just shifting like what we had done and leaving what we wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just try to get a workable draft. And if anybody wanted to add things in um, or recall things, I didn't recall, but yeah. I didn't I, go ahead. I'm sorry. One. I'm shutting up. Go ahead, Jane. I had one thing um, that's, it's still listed as a thing to be done, but we already have done it. The, um, the one about submitting uh, the physical newspapers and the metadata to the California Revealed. So that is something that has been done already. The ball is in their court. So we did do something. <laughs> Great. And that's exactly what, like, I need to know because they're... Yeah, so... I can't like, interpret, like, I wasn't able to interpret, like, every part of, like, that, the archives yeah. project and stuff like that. So thank you. Okay, so it's just, you know, a one-liner over here in the work plan that just needs to be moved to already accomplished. Uh, where is it? Um, for California Revealed, here it is. For California Revealed project, create metadata and so just make it past tense, created metadata and submitted physical copies of Seaside newspapers to be digitized. So just move it into an accomplishment instead of a work plan item. Great. Is the staff doing that at this point or? I, uh, I, well, I, nobody no. is doing anything now. It's the ball is in the court of the state library and they've been closed down pretty much. But oh. They are, they are no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Janie. I just meant actually doing the edit on the oh. plan. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I apologize. Yeah. Oh, Sarah, please confirm you're taking notes for the edit.
Tara. Tara. I'm taking notes for the edit. So okay. got it. We're moving California Revealed Project, Create Metadata. That's been done. So that needs to go to the accomplished category. Could you guys hear me? Sorry about that. My microphone's being bad. Um, yeah. yeah, I am taking notes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if that is the only a, mm -hmm. amendment or are there going to be more amendments? Because. So to, so Hamish, no. I think it's possible if you, if you, since it's in our packet, if you have changes, if you read it and then want to submit changes, you can send them to Sarah and Ashley. There's, there's okay. nothing stopping if, us. If, if we're not meeting uh, until whatever, April, um, that's May. almost May. May. We're yeah. halfway through the year almost. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I feel a little hesitant about this. So what we could do is do a, we can put a motion on the table right now to have a special meeting in March to review the edits and then approve the work plan for 2021. Good, uh, and we could do that quickly. Yeah, we can do that very quickly. Yeah, that can be a special meeting. A <laughs> we special don't have meeting. to talk about everything. Yeah. No, we, yeah, we, <laughs> we'll be very targeted, very focused, and very targeted. Yeah, uh, for example, Steve, one of, one of my uh, things is when we talk about the performing arts, uh, a lot of times people are not real clear about what that is. And they're not going to go to the CBE's webpage to figure out what it is. It means it's music, it's theater, it's dance, it's media. Okay. I mean, if we could say what that was, and then people knew that we were not just visual arts. Okay. I mean, I think that's really important to me. Wait. So, what are you? What are you asking? What are you saying? What I'm, what I'm asking right off the bat is support and foster visual performing arts, which, which I put down uh, as defined by the California Department of Education slash music, dance, so forth. I mean, I, uh, to get that out, that we're, we're not, we're branching out. We're including all the art forms. That, that I mean, it, Okay, I mean, you when I say well, visual art, that, that, that includes a bunch of stuff too as well. It's not, there's no specificity there either for visual arts. I could argue that point too as well. I mean, but I mean, to be, to keep it clean, I mean, visual and performing arts. When I, when I talk to, to my department in the visual performing arts, it, it includes photography, painting, drawing, ceramics, and, and then performing arts, it also talks about theater dance, music, right. band, orchestra, jazz, choral yeah. arts. That's part of I music. Mean, but it, it, it falls under, I don't, I don't know. Part I mean, sculpture, they're part of visual arts. Okay. I mean, that's, that's you want us to list every single discipline in the visual and performing arts? No, I think it's sufficient to uh, occasionally mention music, dance, or theater, and media, uh, so that people can see that, that um, it would be a great thing to have a music program that's sponsored by the commission. Or the same way we're talking about a gallery. I, I, I want to open some doors and some possibilities for um, different perspectives. Okay? I feel like I'm dealing with an entrenched visual arts chairperson. So I have a question related to that. And it comes with my ignorance. Uh, so, you know, when there are musical, when there are those like musical performances that you guys used to table at and the, you know, in the, our park, are those sponsored by the city or is that? That's a city sponsored event, yes. Yeah, so, Who's so that is support, supporting the city. performing arts. So, but does that not fall under this commission? I guess, because I feel like that's happening but I, I definitely feel like Hamish doesn't um, feel it. So I just wonder like, so I wanna acknowledge what he's saying, but I also wanna like understand what's hap what is happening 
Uh, I'm just curious. So if that's a city thing, then if it's not, it's a performing arts don't, I guess I'm trying to identify the disconnect, right? Like if there are performing arts happening, are they this committee or a different committee? Or I'm just curious. I don't mean so, to create a whole nother discussion. No, but no, you, no, no. I th yeah. uh, no. Look, you get I mean, what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. I hear you, but yeah. there's a lot of things that have systemically been happening in the city that we haven't necessarily been the purview of. Like there are musical, dance, and performing arts happening at the Old Myers Center that we're not necessarily a part of because that's a, I feel that falls underneath the parks and recreation, honestly, yeah. that, that, th that scheduling and all that, all those events are under city managed parks and recreation. We gotcha. are, oh, we are encouraged to attend and be a part of those events, but they're not really necessarily have not historically been a part of our purview. That makes you know, sense. Good that makes sense. Absolutely. No, but no, that but I just wanted to understand that. And I don't mean to cut you off, but because I don't okay, that's fine. So I understand that. And then I guess um that answers my question. And I just I guess, but that doesn't mean that we can't do what Hamish wants to do. Also yeah, we can expand that. our capacity yeah. and, and Hamish, again, like I said before, you're more than welcome Thank to you. Em embrace that and and be an ambassador for that. And, and bring it to the table. I just, you know, I'm not an entrenched, yeah, I'm entrenched in the visual arts because I'm a visual arts teacher. I'm a visual artist. That's just a, a natural thing, man. I'm not trying to put down, you know, media. I'm not trying to put down, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to exclude those things. Yes, it, well, they're ahead. in the work plan. I, I just, you know. I, right. Uh, I, I don't want to be stepping on somebody else's toes if there's an arts and recreation committee. Um, and they're in charge of musical performances or dance or whatever. Um, we, we I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily yeah. think you're going to be stepping on toes, Ashley. But, um, can I just interject just a little bit? I would say that there are some programs that have been running in the city for a really long time, Blues in the Park being one of them. Now, if, if the Art and History Commission wants to help out with that event and be a part of that you guys are, are more than welcome to do that and more than welcome to help create different programs and to to expand in the visual and in in performing arts in that way in in no way do we want to do i want anybody to feel um stymied or excluded um when it comes to what is possible um, if, if you guys, you know, what is happening at the recreation department, what do we do? We recreate, right? We are out there, we're outside, we're indoors, we're doing, you know, there's, there's a, all kinds of programs that constantly run. They're not all necessarily created by the rec department. Sometimes we collaborate with outside organizations. Um, so I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm clear in saying that, you, you know, the sky's the limit on, on obviously in what's possible you know you're I don't you know by by any means I mean right now during the pandemic there's not there's nothing going on in terms of um, activity because we're not allowed to do any public major events like, like we were doing before um, so I would venture to say if there are some programs that you want to see happening or you have some ideas you know, if, if we're, when we're talking about, you know, visual art for the gallery, if you, if there are some YouTube videos or some other things and ways, ways that we can get the performing arts up on the gal, in the visual and the, for the gallery, for the virtual gallery, by all means, like, let's, you know, make sure that those things are included, is what I'm saying. I hope that was clear. Sorry. <laughs> it does. It's still, it's, it's still kind of confusing for me, but the, um, the collaboration and, and working together, that, that's a, an outstanding thing. But there's the, yeah. there's the jazz festival and there's all kinds of dance companies in our county. And if there was some way that we could start to reach out and, and integrate them. And then there are some really marvelous things that are happening. I'm, I'm looking at some of the high school music presentations and they're doing um, some, the kids are at home, 
they're working on the orchestra and they've, they've got everybody up on the screen and they're all, they're doing some, some, some really uh, outstanding things. Uh, theater programs are doing outstanding things and getting to people. Uh, this is another Black History Month and <clears throat> Seaside's television stations knows nothing about Black history. And um, that's, that's an, another area that I think that we can collaborate and work on. It's just, it's frustrating, uh, Steve, when I go out there uh, and uh, I'm met with colossal inertia and, and just trying to uh, get people out of these little silos and, and think in terms of, hey, that's, that's Seaside's television station. Why can't we dictate or require, since Comcast is using our streets and our poles and everything else, why can't we require them hey, to do some good good programming and black history? Hey, hey Miss, I, I I feel like you're you're throwing blame on me for not having a dynamic seaside city channel. I. I I don't know, you know, how to, to alleviate your frustration at this point. I really don't because I'm, I'm not the, I'm not a shot caller when it comes to the content of the Seaside City Channel. I'm not the shot caller as to, you know, getting content from Seaside High or Middle School or the MLK out there. I'm just, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do, honestly. You have the ability as a commissioner to make alliances and reach out to those entities that you are finding and bring them to us. You know, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> I'm not trying to stonewall anything, honestly. No, so. I, uh, and I'm not accusing you of that, Steve. What I, what I really would like to do is, I mean, we're talking about these ventures and, and it's time, um, I think it's time to start delivering and it's time, uh, gosh, we, uh, and I understand there's the pandemic, but we've been working on this work plan for six months. And does anybody ever say anything like, hey, you didn't do what you said you were going to do? Um, is, is that a concern of the city? Well, and, we and our, can't do anything right now, Hamish. We're in a global pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Nothing's closed. That. We can't. I can't meet with. <laughs> I. <laughs> I don't know what you want to do when a, the facilities that I'd like to access, like our archive, or our gallery, are closed to the public. I, I don't know what you want me, want us as a as a commission and a body, to do when things are closed and we don't have any access and we're not allowed to do them because we're in a global pandemic, man. Yeah. I and know you might be frustrated. I am too, but I'm trying to ride this thing out just as best as I can. And yeah, you might, you might think that this work plan is just smoke right now. It might seem like that, but it's not. We're doing the best that we can with what we can. Okay. It's really right. important to hear that. It really is. But, and, yeah, and it, can it be disheartening? Absolutely. I'm disheartened right now as well, but I'm just going to keep pushing on. Right. That's all I can do and take it in stride and not get frustrated and not lash out and not get upset, you know? But I would like Ashley to know that I am constantly monitoring Seaside's TV station and, um, and I'm not pleased and I, I, whatever anybody can do to remind the powers that be that that is our station uh, and they have an obligation to do a better job, period. So thank you. Yeah. I have a quick question. Um, I saw some comments from Yolette, which were probably germane, but one of them was like about commissioners bringing stuff. Um, and she put them in the chat. And uh, I, so some of the stuff you mentioned, Hamish, uh, I don't know how to access that stuff, like how to find that stuff. If, if we had um, 
if you could bring a commission and we could do a proposal that we could they could take to the public access channel. I mean, you may know how to do that. I, I don't, um, but that maybe, you know, we could get the ball rolling somehow if you want to be like, a, I'm all about being proactive. Um, so I, I don't know. I just wanted you to feel heard, but. Um, Thank you very but, much. But, it's, it's frustrating and, yeah. and, and I just feel like I've just been bouncing around between different people and I never get a real solid answer. And my understanding also, and, and something that we need to watch out for as uh, the COVID uh, release program, part of the $1.9 trillion is local support and local support for arts agencies and, and for artists. And uh, people in Washington have fought for that. Um, and we should be on top of that, trying to make sure that what is due us and is due the arts, all of the arts and art forms uh, comes our way and that we uh, protect the arts and, and we advocate for the arts uh, for our community. Okay, uh, I think that's really important. Thank you, Hamish. Um, so it looks like we need to spend some time reviewing the edits that were made or are going to be made um, and then possibly have a very brief special meeting to Great. approve said work plan for 2021 be a special meeting on the second Tuesday of March. Is that something that we are interested in pursuing? The only thing on the agenda would be the review and then a set approval or disapproval of the 2021 work plan. Do I have a motion? Yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> I'll second. Thank you. All right. Um, Vice Chair Janie Silveria. Yes, sir. What? Commissioner, uh, hold on. Commissioner Hamish Tyler. Aye. Commissioner Francois Avery. Yes. Commissioner Emerson Brown. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so moved. All right, so we're gonna be moving to. Have to call on you, let he's here. Oh, yeah. all right. On, oh, Commissioner Yolette Merritt. I say aye. Thank you. Okay. We are gonna be meeting again on the second Tuesday of March at five forty-five. So oh, that is the 9th of March. Sorry. Yeah, the second second Tuesday. Yes. The Ides of March. Yeah, right. <laughs> second Tuesday of March. Uh, we are meeting again. 545 to Yola, thank you for your comments um, in the chat. I'm not sure if you um, want to say those out loud. I can or I can paraphrase if, if you'd like. I think it's something that um, I brought up before, like if you have. Ashley. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and yell that. Go ahead, sorry. Saying Ashley, you could go ahead. Um, Yolette just had in the chat real brief, um, she recalled hosting a commission table for arts in the parks, um, fielding questions from attendees. And that is something that has always been an option when we had public, big public events um, where the commission was more than welcome to come and talk about um, everything that was happening um, within the city in, the, in terms of arts um, and connecting with the community. Um, Blues in the Park is a huge um, public concert that happens um, in the summertime. And then she was pointing out that she thought I would, what I assume Ashley was pointing out is that it's up to the commission members to suggest various options in Spearhead. And yes, that, that, is, that is pretty much what I was trying to convey. Sorry if that was confusing. Part of it is I can't see myself. So when I'm sharing my screen, I can only see my screen. And so it's just weird. I'm talking into like outer space. I apologize. Um, I, you know, 
as staff, we're just here to help facilitate what it is that you want to do. We're not here to block anything. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're just here to help you facilitate things and to get things through the city structure. So if you, if you tell me, I'm going to go talk to MLK and I'm going to, I want to do a project with them and we want to do blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to bring it back to the commission. I'm going to say, fantastic. Like, let's, how can I help you? Can I get your okay. phone number? Okay. So that, that's, that's, that's all I was trying to say. I'm, I'm here to help in any way. Um, I know sometimes it's really hard because I don't have an answer or, you know, because I sometimes that's just the way it is. Sometimes you're not going to necessarily like my answer, um, but I, I'm here to, to provide as much information and to help be as transparent as I possibly can about um, what's happening citywide. And that, that's kind of my role. So if, if you need anything, um, I'm happy that you guys are going to meet next month. Um, we'll make sure we get that on the schedule now that you voted on it. Um, in the meantime, if you have anything that you want on the work plan, if you have any suggestions, I mean, you know, Emerson did a great job on the work plan, but if you have a suggestion for, hey, I think it can be improved by doing X, Y, Z, um, let us know. You know, we're not, we're not mind readers. As you're going through it, you want to make those changes, please send them to me, send them to Sarah. By email, we will work on getting a getting you know getting a draft out to you guys well before the meeting. So if we could set a deadline, of please get us the work plan suggestions by the end of this month, that will give us plenty of time to get you guys that work plan back by the beginning of March, so that you have a week to two weeks to look at it before the next meeting. Is that okay? Can we can we do that? Actually, can I also ask you as as part of the recreation department, are are you also kind of like purchasing volleyballs and 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 nets and stuff like that? I mean, when they're when they're needed for particular programs, yes, yes, we well, do have. Okay, we're so running, if we're running an outdoor volleyball program, we are going to buy equipment and things that we need. For that. And are you going to work get the refs and the players and all that? We do it all. <laughs> Anything recreation related, I'm your girl. <laughs> they run a huge, they run a huge and oh, very yeah. robust it's a gigantic, program. It's a gigantic department, various that we have mm. a senior program, we have a teen program, we have a, you know sports, youth sports as well as adult sports. Um, so yeah, talent show, gigantic, it's... gigantic thing. You got we have the arts, skate park. Have, <laughs> we have a skate park now that we're managing. <laughs> we have a lot. It's a it's um. Recreation is a, is a great department. It's community-based, so that's why we're here. We're here to support community, and all of our programs go into that. We have a gigantic youth violence prevention program. We have a brand new um, social worker practitioner who's going to be helping give more therapy to, to families here soon. Like, we have a lot going on in, in recreation. I know it sounds, sounds weird. Like, what do those people do in there? But we do, we do a lot, actually. Well, thank a small portion of what they have to deal with and have to address on a daily basis. So we appreciate your time. But we love it. That's what we do. We're here to help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the agenda is not built by any one person. I just had a lot of things that I wanted to put on the agenda this time, including, you know, talk about the work plan. But it's like, so Hamish, if you want anything to, to put onto the agenda, you're more than welcome to email Sarah. Hey, Sarah, I really want to talk about this please let's put it on the agenda. I think it's something that we really need to address as a commission. So you're more than welcome to, to, be, in, to be a part of the, the building of the agenda. Thank you, I will. And then you can you know, use us as the powers that be if you, you know, want to say, hey, Stephen, you want to spearhead that conversation with, with, with D-Lamp? I'll, 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 I'll be your guy. Tell me where to go and I'll go. Point me like a, an arrow and I will shoot. So um, I think, let's see, where's the ad ad agenda? I got to share my reports. Yeah, we're on commissioner reports. Any commissioner have anything to report? I'm done talking. Uh, I will report a little bit of frustration that I did not hear back from the architect. Uh, remember, he was going to coordinate a, a, a meeting. Um, but I look forward to that. But it will happen one day, I suppose. 
Mr. Baker, well, remember the, that there was going to, he was going to get together with me and we were going to share some thoughts. Oh, okay. So hopefully that happens in the near future. Hopefully it'll happen. Sure I'll be sure to reach out to Mr. Bakewell and see um, and connect you by email. Okay. Thank you. That's my report. Any other commissioner reports? I have, I have uh, two items. One is that finally the Sam Livingston's collection has been picked up by the army. So I know he had uh, worked with the commission for quite some time, but his collection has been sold. But there are certain items that are still looking for a home, uniforms and things like that, that was not appropriate for the library, uh, the army to pick up. So uh, Steve is back up in Berkeley now. But no, that, Steve Levinson. Stephen Levinson. Yeah, right, okay. yes. So that collection uh, has been sold looking for a home for certain items. And then also a second uh, item is that the decision for the County Historic Advisory uh, Commission that has not been made as yet. And so I'll be working with Ashley to get a letter of support. It's sort of been delayed. And, and is anyone familiar with pa Pat Hathaway? No, apparently it's, it's a person in the county who has a very large collection. Unfortunately, he, he died early January, but he has a very large collection of historic photographs. So um, people are looking for possibly being picked up and archived at the University of Monterey State. But if no one's, I, I'll leave that there since no one's, no one's familiar with Pat Hathaway. Is Pat Hathaway a resident of the city of Seaside? Uh, right. No, basically, I think he's from uh, from Carmel, but apparently he's worked, you know, the, the, the members of the round table said for 50 years with collecting all kinds of historic photographs. If it's not uh, really worked, the city of Seaside, I don't know if I'd want it. I've, I've worked with uh, Pat oh, you Hathaway, know? Uh, specifically with the uh, Carmel Sports Theater when I worked with him. And uh, when we produced uh, Pipe Dream that takes place in Cannery Road. Uh, he had an amazing assortment of, of pictures and so forth of uh, local businesses and a turn of the century, 19th century, some really wonderful stuff. I mean, eye opening, eye popping stuff. And I'm sure there's some good seaside pictures in that collection. Francois, do you have your hand raised? Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I don't know personally Pat Hathaway, however, um, I believe that um, he, he's the one person that has the most extensive collection of, of uh, photographs of the area. So yeah. I think that we should look into it and see if he has anything pertaining to Seaside. Thank you, Francois, and also Amish. Uh, I can reach out to those who sent out the email and ask if they have an idea. Apparently, it was not uh, well cataloged, and he did not leave any heirs. So it's a question of where will this huge collection go? But I understand it's quite a treasure house. It's huge. Huge. So, um, Yolette, if you if you would spearhead that, that would be wonderful. If you can find a way, if we can, if you can access it, maybe in some way, some capacity to maybe see if there are things that would pertain to the city of Ciza. Okay, yes, I, I will send out a query. And just as a sidebar, if I can just uh, tap in, do we have a need of any support to digitize any material, or, or is that all taken care of, uh, Jamie and everyone else? Do we need any support in getting additional items digitized? I don't know if we, I know that Janie had the, our newspapers sent to the state library for digitization. We, but yeah, I don't we know about digitized a number of the oral history tapes and, and the newspapers were the next project and then we got started with uh, the San Jose State folks were gonna come in and organize things better. And 
right now we're sort of in a holding pattern. COVID. Uh, <laughs> is 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 Lori Lori Lindbergh still going to do our archives in the future? Because of because of the pandemic and the budget um, budget crisis stuff we found ourselves in, we've kind of pressed a pause on Lori. Um, and mm -hmm. we, have, well, we have reached out to her to check in. Um, we haven't heard anything. However, that doesn't stop us from still continuing to move forward with um, San Jose State and finding another archivist when the time comes. So we're not we're not giving up by any means. Um, we, as you know, we got the new shelves in, and we mm -hmm. kind of worked with our staff here to get them or re put back correctly and reorganized to the best of our ability so that we could find things. Um, but we are in a bit of a holding pattern um, with the archives at the moment. Yolette, you brought up that question. Is there something that you've, you've, is there some kind of collaborative? Uh, I look forward to staff for information about a, a grant option that's out there to digitize. So I'll forward to staff that information that maybe it's of use if we still have items we need to digitize. Okay, thank you. Any other commissioner reports? No? Okay, moving on to staff communication. That's me. Okay, so I have, let me find it. Okay, so first, Black History Month. Um, as you guys know, there's usually um, a huge Black History Month event that happens in Seaside, happens in City Hall, and we collaborate and co-sponsor as a commission, um, and we also do a show in the gallery. And unfortunately this year, um, that is not possible because of the pandemic. Um, so Sandra reached out um, to the NAACP and the other collaborating partners to, to figure out what, what were the plans for this year in terms of the Black History Month pr program. Um, and then how the city and also the commission could assist um, with that. And one of the things that came out of that conversation was could we assist with a virtual Black History Month program. So one of the things, um, so it went before council the beginning of this month to ask for permission um, that so that we could, ho ho could host or help assist them in hosting a virtual Black History Month um, via Zoom. Um, and then we're also gonna stream it live um, on YouTube. Um, so we're gonna do that. And, and as a side note to that, um, Sandra's also putting together um, a, a, a show, a virtual show to, to play during the program. Um, and as we were talking about earlier, we, would, we want to beta test it to see if we could actually put it up and have a virtual gallery um, and have, that, have the art that's being shown at the program used for the virtual gallery. Um, so that's what's happening with Black History Month. Um, and I stay tuned, um, check your emails because I'll be sending out more information about that um, as we get closer to that. Also at the beginning of, I believe it was the end of December, beginning of January, um, Leslie Milton sent out the 700 forms to all the commissioners asking oh. everyone to, to renew because it's that time. So those are due. So if you haven't done it, please send in your 700 form um, and if you need to, let me know now, and I will resend it to you um, if you need me to. So has everyone done their 700 form? I forgot. Can you please send me one? Yes. When, when and how were they sent? They were sent digitally. They were sent electronically. They weren't sent in the mail. Okay. Uh, oh. Yes. Yeah, so I, I would need I to be gotten. sent in the mail for me. Okay. So what we'll do is, I'm pretty sure I have all of your addresses on file. If I don't, um, I might call you and get it. But we can. We'll I'll send it out again electronically by email. And if I, you know, if I need your address, I'll send it out by mail too. But those are are due. But you're exactly. going to want to get those sent to City Hall as soon as possible. And I ask Ashley, are they? Are we able to complete them online? Yes. Okay. If I send you the electronic form, you'll just have to download it, save it on. You can't send, you can't do everything online. You got to download the form, 
and then complete it and then you can email it into Leslie. Any other questions? Thank I got you. one more thing. Okay. All right. So here's my last thing. Um, in the rec department lately, we've been transitioning to virtual programming and trying to figure out how we can still connect to the community, um, but do it in a manner that is safe. Um, and so a lot of times, like, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we did a whole egg, egg, Easter egg delivery, all, you know, we can try to come up with all these innovative ways to, to see people and to interact safely. One of the things that we wanted to do was um, kind of like a seaside heroes um, virtual program. So it would be like a post where um, we would be showcasing seaside heroes. Um, but in full honesty and transparency, it's kind of hard to pick <laughs> like who, 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 who decides who's a seaside hero. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to talk to the, to you guys about um, is your thoughts on that. Um, maybe that's like, it, it would be, it would sort of be like a post, you know, every month or once a week where we would be showcasing somebody in Seaside and, and we were thinking we could do a nomination form. So it'd be, the nominations would be open to the community um, or we could develop some sort of program to kind of showcase the special work that our Seaside natives are doing. Tell me what you think. One suggestion to make it a little bit more inclusive because it's a problem when you start selecting people out. I know this happened when I worked on a little accommodation a few years ago. People are asking how come this other person wasn't included? So maybe making it more like a community building activity, maybe a seaside community and not like selecting people to be sort of highlighted. Maybe the, the next door neighbor really helped out someone next door that really needed something. Just thank you seaside, something a little bit more proactive and inclusive so it's not stratifying people here and there, but thank okay. you Seaside and people can nominate their next door neighbor or you know, whoever they care to. So it makes it sort of a yes, hey, yay Seaside. Okay, so broadening out the topic. So it's not just heroes, quote unquote, but it's, um, you know, you could be anybody. Right, because anybody. I found the little things I've done like that before to, to avoid that as some things I've done, it's just making a very, make everybody 80 and over. So if they live that long, then it's okay. But Over otherwise, you have people who say, oh no, this person should be, no, I should be there. Yeah. You choose yeah. that person and not that. And, that. and that was my thought too. It's like, it's, 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 it's nice to acknowledge people, but you, you have to be very cautious and you don't want to do anything that's um, considered unfair or impartial. The, the problem might also actually be with the term hero. And um, it might be better for a citizen's award or something that implies a community contribution. Um, a hero could be, you know, the guy on the football field or, or whatever. Um, right. And, and, and I'm, we're bound to get into trouble with that if you start. Yes. But picking up on Amish is maybe something like unsung her heroes. There you so go. About the person who just don't use the word hero. Or you say, you know, <laughs> hero's not a bad word, but unsung. You know, it could be your, you know, your next door neighbor who mows your lawn. You know, it could be anything. Yeah. yeah so a good so neighbor like, award. A way to acknowledge anybody. <laughs> thank you, Seaside. Something like thank you, Seaside. Something like that. Yeah. Good neighbors. Yeah. So to avoid categorizing a, like using a loaded word or whatever, you could, you could, are you going to give them, you know, like a symbol of their award or anything like that? Or even if it's virtual, it doesn't have to be like a physical thing. Um, you, you could just have a name for the award and refer to that instead of like, hero like yeah. like yeah. for example like ksbw gives out the golden apple award to teachers right so they don't say like like super teacher you know because all you know 
Steve's a teacher. The job is hard, right? So uh, they're all like doing, you know, it's a heroic effort just to be a teacher in general, right? So like, yeah. so that you could have, and I'm just being flipped, but you know, you could do like the golden seahorse or something like that. You know what I mean? The crystal, so you get, crystal apple and the crystal seahorse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could just have like something that symbolizes the city and, and the ideal of being neighborly or, you know, I don't want to, you know, I want you guys to recognize what you want to recognize with the award, but so you just kind of put parameters around the award and you, you name the award and say, oh, they got like this award. So they don't have like a, a title per se. I, I, if you want to avoid loaded words like hero, like to Hamish's point. Um, well, CNN also has a heroes program that they. Talk, right. And almost every one of them have contributed something above and beyond to their local communities and, and to people that just, it's a give, giving back. Uh, Principally, it's a good neighbor, good Samaritan award, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, and so that I guess my my point is, if you use the title, of, if you have a title of the award, then you don't have to worry about what you call the person. I guess. No. Or like you don't have to categorize. Anyway, I that's just my small suggestion. If if you want to go that way, if you if you find out you're running into problems, like categorizing their deed an idea and i wanted to bring it before you guys because originally it was we were thinking about ways to incorporate more seaside into our black history month social media posts and so it was connected to history in some ways that's why i brought it to you guys but this is kind of morphing out of the history realm um, and more into the community sphere which is totally fine um, um, and not a problem at all. And I, I like it. I like it a little bit more now. It, it, I just, I, I didn't want to run into, well, you know, who chose that person and why, and why yeah. did that person yeah. get chosen? I don't want to walk down that road and I want to yeah. make sure that we're being open and transparent about, you know, everything that we're doing. So I definitely think maybe um, I like the kind of the Crystal Seahorse or the Citizens Award or doing something more community based. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. And, and thank you so much for your for your input. And I'm um, taking it back and and I'm going to rework it. We'll rework it and we'll bring it back to you and, and you can tell us what you think. One thing I'm picking up on Emerson's comment, one thing I find is just a lovely thing to do, and it's not expensive, especially if you don't give a wooden plaque, give paper, people a paper certificate, because in the past with different things I've done in a different county, people hang that up in their office, they hang it in the window of their business, you know, give them something that they could put in their memory box. So it's just a piece of paper. Thank you, Seaside. Uh, you know, community, you know, and they share it with their children, their grandchildren or whatever, you know, that's just a piece of paper. You know, right. I would, I would, you know, I, that's something that for me, it's just uh, automatic. And if we could, we can't do it now, taking every opportunity. And I know last year I spoke about to commend people before council, to bring people before and say, thank you. Because quite often people do it when the people are no longer around, but it's lovely to do it when they're still alive. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I definitely, I like the idea of a paper certificate and I definitely think that if you, as a commission, you guys want to develop a program that, you know, and I think we've talked about it before in different different ways. We're talking about, you know, you know, talking about the historical nature of different buildings and things like that. And I, I definitely think if that's going to, if that's on your work plan and you guys want to move forward with that and bringing, putting that before council, that'd be great. Um, and something to, to definitely work on and do. That's all I got. Sorry, I I realized that was good. Thank you, Ashley. Talking. Thank you, guys. Thank I will Ashley. be sure to send you the seven hundred form. Um, Please do. Sandra Gray or Sarah Tier. Oh, I can go. Uh, I just wanted to uh, point out that the Black History Month. Uh, program 
is going to be February 21st, which is a Sunday, just like it always is. And it's the third Sunday, just like it always is. And it's going to be from 2 to 3.30. That's when the, um, that's what we've worked out so far. And we still haven't, we're still waiting to see who's going to be on the program, what's going to be on the program. But I do have art for the program already. And I'm working on, I've already got all the artists that have submitted artwork in a slideshow. I haven't put mine in there. <laughs> and there's one artist that I'm still waiting for. But uh, there's at least nine pieces for the exit for that show. And I'd like to have the artwork available at the end for people to look at just the art show. So that's what I was thinking about, making sure that and that's why we can add it to our online gallery for the website, because it'll be all together as a slideshow, hopefully. Quick, um, quick question, Sandra. This is Emerson. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, but can we, and this is just out of curiosity, I'm not asking to approve or anything like that. But so then for the next time we meet, Ashley or Sarah, can we, um, can we see, I know it'll be online, but like before it's online, can we see the, the gallery or something like that? Sure, do you want us to send you the link to the page so you can see what it looks like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a draft? Yeah, if that's yeah. possible. If it's not possible, that's fine. I mean, I can go on the website when it's live, but you know I what I mean? I believe I can do that. I believe there's a way to keep the page private without it being linked anywhere that, you know, the public can find it without the direct URL. Yeah, if it's as easy as an email and it doesn't add a lot of work, that'd be awesome. Just so, you know, next time we get together, we could talk about it. I can, or, you know, we could decide if we want to put it on the agenda. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize, Sandra, but that was, great idea. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, that's a great thing you're doing. So I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's another yeah. comment from Yola in the chat. Yeah, the, the question was, um, will the show be virtual? And the answer is yes. We're, it's going to be linked similar to how our commission meetings and council meetings are linked to YouTube. So it'll be streamed live um, on YouTube. Are we referring to the Black History Month program, Yola? Yes. 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 I don't know if it's going to be on cable TV, but it'll be on YouTube. I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, I don't no. know about access to television. And Everybody's. If you said no, um, I, can, I can certainly ask the question um, and see what, what comes of it. So I will do it. I will ask. Please do. <laughs> it's part of their contract. We have with AMP that they play this kind of programming. Absolutely. Sarah, did you have anything that you, sorry, sorry, Stephen. Sarah, did no, you no, 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 please. Um, I was just going to say, Sarah. Uh, nope. Uh, you guys have covered everything. I am good. Beautiful. Okay, guys. See you guys March 9th at 545 so we can review and hopefully approve the 2021 work plan. Thank you very much for Thank your you time. Long. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, no, it is 7.37 p.m. for adjournment. You need to move? Do we need to move to do that? No. I don't know. <laughs> no, no ah. it's, it's just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> that way people know when the meeting ended if they're watching right. this later on YouTube. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Good night.